such a nice sound. Hi, I'm Don Bodan from SampleLibraryReview.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Spitfire solo strings from Spitfire Audio. It's been over six years since Spitfire released one of their very first instruments, a solo string library. And since then, the developers had thousands of hours sampling and scripting experience for many award-winning libraries. Since Spitfire announced that they were revisiting solo strings with all new instruments, I couldn't wait to see what they had cooked up. Library downloads as 42.8 gigabytes includes sample sets of solo violins, viola, cello, and bass. It's designed with the same signal chain mic positions as the other Spitfire orchestral libraries, as well as being recorded in Air Lindhorst onto two inch tape. It contains six main NKIs uh, with three main violins. Which uh, with a virtuoso first desk and progressive. Uh, we'll get into the details on those a little bit later in the video, as well as a number of extended techniques, NKIs, patches as individual uh, articulations, separate legato patches, which we're really going to jump into, of course, and then a selection of what they call other patches. Library is a contact player instrument meaning it loads right into your library's tab and is compatible with both the full and free version of Contact 5.6.8 or higher. Library sells for $3.99 from Spitfire Audio. Um, over the weekend, while I'm putting this together, it's on a special intro price of $3.39. I'll include links to take you straight over to Spitfire Audio, as well as to sample library reviews, Spitfire solo strings page, where I'll include all the demos, the official videos, and any other review videos. Now, before we jump in here, you'll see I've got the uh, library loaded and I've got three different violin patches as main NKIs, a viola, a cello, and a bass. Now, what is up with these three different ones? Well, straight from the developer, it says that the Virtuoso First Desk and Progressive um, NKIs contain their own range of articulations, so there'll be different articulations for each of these. And there are also different recording positions in the stage at Lindhurst. The virtuoso is standing, and it captured playing the sound of uh, sonatas. So the soloist would be out front in front of the orchestra, uh, concerto style. And then the first desk, that one um, is placed to add definition to the string line. So it would be like a first chair. Um, and then the progressive player this one is further away from the conductor with different kinds of articulations for a more modern contemporary kind of performance so let's just jump right in first would virtuoso and this one like i said is uh made to be standing up in front of the orchestra so to play in front of your uh in front of your um in front of your string section. And you can hear they've got sampled rebows on our longs. You can hear how it's really up and out front in front of uh, um, stage right. They actually have a little dot. Is that what it's supposed to be for? <laughs> Some nice flotandos. And it looks like we've got a... Uh, Long harmonics. Yeah, you really get that bow sound in the room. It sounds great. And 
long progressive. So progressive, that means it's the uh, vibrato kicking in, and it looks like it's 21. I got my controller set up for a different library. One second. I'll go to 21. And we'll be in good shape. There we go. It looks like with that progressive, that uh, progressively adds vibrato. So you really, I don't know why they have that control there for that articulation, because I don't hear any difference. Sopatajalo. Staccato. And spiccato. Yeah, that's nice there. I'm going to beat my mic for just a second so you don't hear my keyboard clacking around. what's going on here. I've got my uh, Bartok pits and then when I play it it jumps back to my pizzicato. You really have to hammer your velocity down. Okay it's a velocity sensitive so that's kind of nice to know. It's got a little white mark demarcation up here that may be what that is. So we got pizzicato at normal to medium velocities and then hard would be going to our Bartok pits. You can really hear that in the low strings, probably. Yeah. Very short harmonic. That's nice to have. Tremolos. And then we got our trills. Very nice. I'm sure I'm going to jump to our legato patch here. This is our first desk. So um, as I had read through before the first desk is recorded kind of like the first chair for adding that definition to the string line you know how when they make up a string section um, plays out leading the orchestra and gives a, if you play a first desk or a first chair uh, in front of your other string libraries especially the way they've built this so it's the same signal path and placement and um, microphone positions as Spitfire chamber strings or Spitfire symphonic strings. So utilizing it uh, will really give you definition, bite, and add another layer of realism. Here is first desk legato. It's got these little white demarcations, which now we know means that it's velocity sensitive articulation switching. And as um, I'll include a link over to the sample library review Spitfire solo strings page, and we'll have the uh, video that Paul Thompson created um, to show you the legatos off. But what he basically was saying is a soft change in velocity. 
going to be a portamento transition, whereas a heavy would be a fingered transition. A hard would be a bow change, although I'm not hearing the bow change. Okay, now I am. So it's uh, articulation um, is driven by your velocity. And here we can really control our vibrato. Yeah, I'm really liking the amount of controls with this and that velocity-based legato transitions. That sounds really nice. Okay, now let's jump back over to our um, first desk. Uh, without legato, unfortunately, those legato patches are separate right now. Uh, just a note here, this is version one of the library. Just released, downloaded it soon as it came out and for the purposes of the uh, video I want to make sure you know this is version one because it sounds like they're going to be possibly adding additional legato either instruments or um, velocity dependent transitions for your legato in the future just reading forums and seeing some of the videos of the early uh, early demos Sordinos. Uh, you know, and I'm just tempted to play a little bit of Legato line. Uh, long flotandos. Yeah. It's got a really nice sound to it there, especially like the uh, airiness in those highs. And our long progressive. I'm going to mute my mic again for these shorts because I can hear my... I do want to comment that I really like the um, attacks. You really hear um, a quality to the bow on the string that you rarely, that I rarely hear in sample libraries. You've got the spiccato. like we got pizzicato in our bar talk again with that little white indicator for velocity and
Yeah, that's a really beautiful sound. And mandolin pizzicato, this is where they actually play it uh, like a guitar, holding it in a guitar position. This is really nice having these short harmonics. This brushed Baroque um, Consordino, I'm not uh, familiar with it, and I'm going to have to look it up. Um, I'm not a string player myself, so... Uh... Now, what's nice about this, which I... I <laughs> I don't want this to be a, a giant video, um, but, however, I really think this could be a, a fun little bit of experimenting here. Playing our uh, front desk legato with our Spitfire chamber strings. Legato as well, just to kind of hear how they blend. I'm just going to put them all in the same MIDI channel. It's adding that uh, portamento, which really sounds nice. So here's just the chamber strings. which is a really lovely sound. And then here's with that first desk. So a lot of definition and it could be uh, depending on your vision of the music. It could be that uh, this one's just a little loud. I'll turn it down just uh, to DB. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got a little detoured, but that's definitely how the library was kind of uh, envisioned as being able to be used in some ways. Um, okay. Now, viola. If you know, um, oh, I'm sorry. We're gonna, I'm not going to skip the progressive violin, but I'm really excited about viola. If you... If you've been watching my videos, you know I'm a viola and cello fanatic. I just love the sound of those. So this will be uh, the progressive player. Uh, and this was recorded further away from the conductor um, and meant to be played like solo patches, passages for more modern filmic sounds. Let's see. I know it's got some fun articulations like a whisper, which we'll check out. I like the attack on these longs, for sure. If I've got my dynamics and expression up, hear that bow bite? Yeah. And then you get that resonance of that bow vibrating in the body, resonating around in the room on your concertino. I believe Christian uh, Henson is mad about the flutandos. I think I remember reading that. They sound great. Okay, you hear that little bit of attack? 
that squeech, the attack, that's something I'm really loving about the library, the attention to detail to keeping the attacks. Uh, what do they say? They say never play fifths with the strings, right? And our progressive. Soul Pumped. Staccato. I'm going to go ahead and mute my. Pizzicato to Bartok Pits. There you go. You really got to hammer it down. I'm going to mute my mic again for you. That resonates a little lower, uh, better in the lower end of the... Um, violin here. I'm really loving the con lingo. I think I'm going to need to work that into my next piece of music I'm working on. Now, the nature of this progressive being further back on the stage means that we're not getting as much uh, volume straight out from what I can tell. You can see here with the short harmonics and with our short brushed Baroque, we're getting a very different amount of dynamic. That's hard as I can go. They call it tremolo, but I know that I read about a tremolo whisper. And I'm making sure I didn't miss the tremolo whisper. No. Okay. All right. Let's move along. Viola time. Now, I do want to note here that a violinist I do know and respect on the forums has said uh, that this is the best sounding viola sample he'd ever heard. Again, you get that attack. That flam right at the beginning of the note. change played on top of an entire uh, section. It's really going to add to the realism. I, re 
really love uh, how Soul Ponticello has those overtones. And I'll mute my mic again because I'm going to pound away. nice bite in that low end it really digs in on the higher velocities as well here we got our double uh, velocity pont uh, pizzicatos and again that lower range you really get a lot of snap hear that Again, those mandolin pizzicatos, a little more rounded and full. And it's great how they actually, you actually hear, because that low string, you have to play it differently with the, your low uh, concert C on the viola, so. You can hear the difference in how you play it and have to mute it yourself versus uh, a full step up. Or it's just natu naturally, probably palm muted. good idea of what the viola sounds like and I think overall um, especially once we got to the viola I felt like the samples are really meticulously clean um, there is that human nature of performance they really captured and I, th I could be wrong but I think they, they've got a, a a different player for each of the violins and of course different players for their cello bass now i love you have vibrato control vibrato because so much um contemporary stuff like the Arnold's work and uh, his contemporaries. They're really playing a lot of these like sustains with no vibrato. Whereas normal classical players tend to just do this. An arc with not only their dynamics and expression, but their vibrato. Such a nice sound. Yeah. 
Yeah. So intimate, yet broad and full. And our progressive. hear a bit of flange. I wonder if it's... Do you hear that as well? I'm going to mute my mic. I could be hearing things, and it could be a... a um, oral illusion, uh, but I, I feel like I hear a little bit of a crossfade on that in the form of a high-end flange kind of sound. Yeah, I'm going to meet my mic for the next couple. You know, I I really do like the sample set. I think the quality is really great, but I feel like my spiccato versus my staccato doesn't quite have the contrast that I'm normally looking for. Like the spiccato, the staccato has a nice bite to it here. And then when I click over to my spiccato, I think I would even hear a little more bite and a little, um, but I don't. And then we've got our uh, pizzicato to Bar Bartok Pits. That has a nice bite to it. Oh yeah, this is going to end up being my favorite new articulation for these solo strings, I think, these conlingos. say nice work everyone we're doing a great job here <laughs> let's lit up this cello legato take a listen to the difference between the uh three different legato styles triggered by our uh, velocity
just has a nice full tone. Let's go back and check out that bass. I do remember that Christian Henson specifically had said that this bass set of articulations is going to, uh, I'm paraphrasing, this bass set of articulations is going to make a lot of um, bass players have to be playing these articulations, which um, they're pulled off in a way that I think might be tricky. Here's our lungs. And flotando. I'm going to mute my mic because it sounds like these are pretty quiet. much chaos on that attack. I like it. Those staccatos sound so nice. Let's hear what the spiccato sound like. Not a lot of difference, just like, um, I mean, perceptive wise, I hear a tiny bit more bite in my staccato than spaccato. Uh, and that's could be a nature of my use of other libraries. It's leading me to think it should do that. But for the most part, I usually think that my spaccato should not only be a little shorter, but have a little bit more oomph to it. Let's check out the pits and Bartok pits. I'm sure these will be glorious. Yeah, very nice. And our con lingo. Yeah, this is nice. A pizzicato undampened. Get a nice little jazz sound out of that. Let's hear these low bass tremolos. I bet they're going to rock the house. No, I normally would kind of wrap it up in here, but um, I think I want to check out extended techniques to just make sure that there's not some stuff we'd be missing if we didn't uh, look into these. 
um, tremolo, and here's a tremolo. It's weird. Tremolo loads up, but I don't have any notes. Nope. I don't have any notes to play those. Okay, that's odd. And those aren't anything we don't already have in our main instrument. So let's check out the virtuoso with the core techniques. Again, I'm looking through these. I just want to make sure that there aren't any brand new articulations that we haven't heard. Uh, longs, concertino, harmonics, flotundo, sapunticello, spit cut toes. Again, this is odd. I'm, I'm loading up at Pizzicato Bar Talk and. I'm going up and down my keyboard, and I don't have any key green uh, blue keys, so I'm not sure if that's a, a mistake or if um, we've got a problem with my package, my <laughs> sample package download from the developer. Uh, so it looks like extended techniques just breaks those out between core and decorative individual articulations. I think we all know what these will be. It's every single articulation as a separate NKI. And then other patches. Okay, we've got economic light resources and time machine. Let's see what our time machines are set to do. Is it going to control? Okay, it's for a Schwartz. So we've got eighths. That's nice. So these are sampled and prepared as eighths using time machine to sync up to a natural performance. And then the light resources. Yeah, well, that concludes the first look of Spitfire Solo Strings. Been very excited to check out the library. I have to say, I'm uh, not disappointed. I think they've done a great job. The sample set sounds amazing. If I'm gonna be a critical guy. If I'm going to criticize the library, it's all it's that I would always love to have my legato inside my main instrument, just so I can key switch over there and have access to it. Now, I know the reality of scripting for these contact libraries. I believe that Blake is the guy over at uh, Spitfire scripting. I know the reality is complicated, and that's why you don't always get a legato uh, ability once you've built a complex uh, library inside contact but that's going to be my main thing uh i do look forward to seeing what happens in the future um if it's true that there'll be more legato instruments released um will they be releasing the legato for the virtuoso and the progressive player for the violins uh, that'll be I'll be very curious to see if they do that and uh, as well like I said uh, earlier on there was a little bit of a talk about possibly having another articulation that is a legato articulation show up somewhere hope you have enjoyed the video I, I have really had an eye-opening experience checking out the library listening through it let me hear your thoughts please comment in the description below like, share, and subscribe. Love your support. Be sure to head over to samplelibraryreview.com for the latest news, reviews, and our weekly deal compressor.